40 years since he was first elected to parliament, many still refer to the lawmaker from Siaya County as senator, a position he held for two terms. Even after being elected as governor for Siaya County, he has not shied away from voicing his opinion on divisive matters such as arbitrary amendments to the law to accommodate the contentious finance bill. Orengo has mostly been in the opposition during his career, briefly joining the NAC government during the late President Mwai Kibaki's tenure when he led a national unity government. But his new job description requires him to have synergy with the national government because of the links between counties and the national government. A year since he took office as governor for Siaya County, we take a look at Orengo's transition from the national and legislative politics to being a county boss. Siaya County is located on the eastern banks of Lake Victoria. The county supports a strong fishing industry with a number of hatcheries along the waterfront. <laughs> Ferries are crucial here for transportation of both passengers and cargo. The water bus cruises through the area serving as a fast and convenient means of transport through the lake. Agriculture is the main economic force for the county with local production of rice, cotton, coffee, sugarcane and tobacco. Seasoned politician and senior counsel, now Governor James Orengo, is county boss in Siaya. It takes a village to raise a man. <laughs> and Ambira Primary School in central Lugenya, Siaya County, is where the making of the man Orengo began. Leila, welcome to our home. Thank you so much. Uh, in Yawara village. Okay. And uh, right here, uh, this is a, a picture of my mom. Okay. She was married when she was a little, little girl. Uh, she was, I think, at that time about 13, 14 years old. Uh, and uh, I never called her mom uh, ever in my life. I called her with her maiden name, uh -huh. uh, Atiende. Atiende is uh, uh, really the name should be Atiende. And uh, when I was growing up, she, she was like my sister rather than my mother. Mm. And this is my father. My father was a policeman. He went to a school in Maseno. He was Jaramogi Odinga's classmate. Mm -hmm. He was a footballer. Wow. He played for Kenya in the Gosage Cup. And uh, he was in the police force until he retired around 1965. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, part of the highlight of his career was that he was very close to the nationalists at that time. Mm -hmm. Particularly, Aguin Skodek was, was a very good friend of his. Um, I think I was a mama's boy more. Uh, everything that I am today was inspired by him, but really the person who made sure I went through was my mom. You know, coming from 1980, that transition is not so much of a transition. His interaction with grassroots politics in Siaya started eons ago when he was elected member of parliament to Kenya at only 29 in the year 1980. He's headed a national political party, Social Democratic Party, and vied for the presidency in 2002, where he was placed fourth. Despite his proactive approach to politics and governance, Orengo has mainly been in the opposition. He has been arrested and incarcerated several times. He has a reputation as a politician who is not daunted by taking on the mighty in politics and government. Most of the life I lived as a member of parliament, I was in trouble most of the time. My, my daughter was going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Musongari, and the boys were at uh, St. Mary. I remember one time when I was taking them to school, I was stopped by the police. They, they pushed themselves into the car, and uh, they, they said I should get out, and we leave the kids in the car. Over the years, he has been an outspoken critic of government policies and has played a significant role in advocating for political and electoral reforms. Let me tell you, me, I'm not a career politician. And, and I think if I was a career politician, I would have walked out. Uh, I'm a conviction politician. There are some things I believe in that I, I, I would not want to compromise. I think that uh, the reform movement in Kenya has been to some extent compromised. Opportunistic politics have completely interfered with the question of reform. So that uh, a reformer in Kwanzaa 
would be fighting a reformer in, 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 in Azimio, or Azimio reformer fighting a reformer in, in Kenya Kwanzaa. You know, because one, one of the bitterness I had in life is being in the opposite sides with Martha Karua or uh, with Kibana, you know, because we've been on opposite sides at some stage. Imagine if that movement would have been solid together. Uh, I think Kenya would be in a different place. He was also among the most prominent critics and activists against single-party rule. Alongside Raila and other notable politicians, Orengo agitated for multi-party democracy, a new constitution, and free and fair elections, among other issues of public interest. You know, on the question of cost of living, cost of living, uh, that was not resolved. I think that was unfortunate. But uh, as you know, constitution making is a difficult exercise. Between, you tend to have incremental changes. Yeah. And to that extent, I think the dialogue team uh, did a good job. But the rider is, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this one, I, I must say without a fear of contradiction, when, when you want to change the constitution, I think it's good to step back and, and look at what was the original vision around the constitution. That, that, that constitution, if you tear it apart piece by piece, then it becomes a mongrel. There are some fundamental changes that uh, were coming from both sides of the uh, divide and from the public that needed to go to the people. The only time Orengo has been in government was during the government of National Unity, a coalition government where he served as Minister for Lands and Settlement for five years. The transition to county government after years of playing politics is a new challenge for him. I was in the national government uh, and I had a difficult doc docket uh, as Minister for Lands. So managing a public entity uh, uh, being a ministry in the national government and being part of the national government, I think that was an adequate preparation to what I'm doing at the moment. The CIA governor was among leaders who accompanied President William Ruto for his two-day state visit to India. This, despite Orengo being an opposition party governor and in many instances a critic of President Ruto, Kenyans expressed mixed reactions to this. It was a big misunderstanding. Yes. One, we are not in the president delegation. I would uh, urge people who see politics and read politics and everything to, so to no rest at peace. Our, our visits were separate and distinct, but there are some projects you cannot undertake without partnerships uh, with national and international entities, including the Kenya government. Uh, we went to India as a delegation of the Lake Region Economic Bloc. And these synergies will continue to be there because the Constitution itself said county governments and the national government are separate but inter interdependent and must carry uh, their activities in the spirit of uh, consultation and collaboration. Synergy or not, the CIA governor says delay in allocation of funds to counties from the exchequer remains a thorny issue. I think it's just misbehavior on the part of the national government because, you know, the constitution says that the money should be sent to the counties in good time, timelessly. That's the word that the constitution and the legislation provides. Now, if, if you get money three months, like now, we have not got money for September, October, November, and we are now in December. Uh, and you've got to pay salaries, you've got to keep projects running, you've got to pay pending bills. So it affects planning and it affects uh, development. CIA residents have in recent months decried the poor state of roads in the county. Right now we have a big debate about the roads maintenance levy, which a percentage of it was coming to the counties. Now they are trying to you know, transfer all of it to the national government. Siaya County's main economic activity is agriculture. The first year, we provided certified seeds, nearly a thousand metric tons of seeds, free of charge. It was a complete grant. And then we provided fertilizers with a subsidy. And, and I must say, after the um, harvest in that season, which was around July, August, there were indications that uh, it, we delivered uh, the, the, in terms of food uh, production. Rice in the Yala Delta, people were growing rice, they were taking rice to Uganda for milling. 
uh, and bringing it back uh, for, for now supply to you know the market. So we said no, we got to build a rice mill, which the farmer is going to benefit from um, without any element of it being taken to another party. The approach has been to bring variety because basically we've been growing sorghum, maize and cassava. Uh, you, you find in, in many places here a lot of people are starting to grow uh, avocado, vegetable oil by planting things like sunflower. Siaya County relies mainly on Lake Victoria and Kanyaboli for its natural fisheries resources. These resources underpin the livelihoods of many residents in terms of food and employment directly and indirectly through allied industries and support services. Wavuvi wanatoka hapa kwa beach kitu saa tisa alfajiri. Wengine wanatoka saa kumi alfajiri na wanaenda mbali kutafuta samaki. Kurudi wanaeza rudi jioni kama samaki yali yake labda yezi kuwa nzuri sana. Ndipo saa huwa tunawashauri ya kwamba ile wamepata wakimbie na yo walete harakaraka tuweke kwa processing plant ili ifadhiwe. Lakini pia huwa uh, tunawapatia barafu kutoka kwa fish processing plant yetu wanaenda nayo barini kuhifadhi samaki zao ili samaki isi, isiaribike hata kama wameenda umbali wa kiasi gani tuwezi kosa soko sasa hizi tukilinganisha na hapo awali josi ose konyo walwanda ka a gisekelo nwa dong ruok ma jinitie gimioga yedi gi promote ga yedi kata ka pm to gikelo nwa ber kuom jo yethu wago the governor described the blue economy as a very important sector for CIA's economic growth. We are going to host the World Fisheries Day next year in, in, in late November, December. And that uh, is another story to tell because without the capacities that we have, I don't think the national government would have been comfortable bringing that uh, celebration to, to CIA. But there's a lot of potential for uh, the blue economy. If you go to the lake, the, the amount of uh, fish farming that is going on is encouraging. I have many more people knocking our doors, trying to set uh, fish cages in the lake. Uh, the tonnage that comes out in the lake uh, is higher. We are monitoring what type of equipments uh, fish farmers uh, are deploying in the lake. The county has employed ECD teachers on permanent and pensionable basis as it seeks to address education shortfalls. If you have a, a child uh, who is five, six, seven years old and the teacher looking after that child uh, is not being paid, uh, is on a stipend, uh, we thought that, you know, that would affect the lives of young, the young people, the young kids. The newly launched industrial park at Got Akara holds the promise of transforming the region with its potential to generate employment opportunities, bolster local businesses and stimulate economic growth. Yeah. Mm. Also, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Governor Orengo has consistently stressed the importance of diversifying Siaya County's economy. It's been a year in office, and after a long day running the county... I enjoy being with, with my family. They have stood by me. My son Mike is here. When, when we are together, you know, there's no age difference. We, we, we're enjoying our drink of music. <laughs> He's a, that was good. He's an architect. With the guy you loud, loudly, I'm an architect. Yeah, an architect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he likes dancing. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. today, yeah. <laughs> today I don't know if we'll get a jig. No, no, no we we'll may, maybe <laughs> eventually, <bright>. eventually. <laughs> so I, I, they've been very supportive, very, very support, supportive. And sometimes when we discuss my politics, when we are going the wrong way, they tell me. Uh, you know, here you're lost. Uh, so, so in order to have a reality check, I, I normally engage them in what I'm doing. Uh, but most of the time, we, we, we do acti uh, non-political activities. No. Yes, I, I like to read, and I told you, I like reading historical works, uh, political biographies. Uh, I read law books. By the way, I like Latino music a lot. Yeah, uh, and, and a bit of classics. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, classical music. Uh, I listen to that quite a bit in my car, uh, you know, 
I, I keep a certain variety of classical music. But of course, everybody loves rumba <laughs> uh, and a bit of benga. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for speaking to us. And thank you. Thank you to Citizen TV. Yeah. And share uh, is your home anytime. Shukran. Thank you.